So this video is in response to a question one of my AP students had about the 2010 AP Physics C Mechanics question 2, free response question. Um, the idea is the ball is rolling down this inclined plane, the ball has a moment of inertia, um, it falls through the air and hits a cart. The question was really about the first two questions here, A and B on the exam. Um, the first was label the forces and the AP answer is the normal force, of course, is from the contact of the table. Mg is from the center of mass, and the force or friction is from the contact of the table um, up the incline plane. Um, the question was asked, why is it up the incline plane when if the ball is rolling like, th like this in a uh, clockwise fashion, then shouldn't perhaps the force or friction be down the incline plane because the friction will stop that ball's rotation? As you know, the pivot is right here where the ball meets the table. The answer to why the force of friction is up the inclined plane is because the gravity is going to be pulling the ball down at a, at a higher, um, higher speed than the ball's rotation. And so for, for that reason, the force of friction has to be up to counter the ball's sliding down the inclined plane. So that's why the force of friction is up. So this, this solution here for uh, the, the application of Newton's second law, you've got an mg sine theta term going down the incline plane and a force of friction term going up, and that has to equal ma. That is correct. Um, I have issue, however, with the, the way that the AP solves the torque, and let me explain that. So they solve the torque by assuming that the pivot is in the center of the ball, the center of the ball's mass. And it's, and it's spinning like so. And they use, they calculate the torque to be R times the force of friction, um, and that is equal to I alpha. It's Newton's law of angular, in angular form. Um, this, this I have issue with. The reason for that is um, because the ball is actually rolling, it has a pivot. It has a well-defined pivot. And unlike an object that's in static equilibrium, um, you have to choose the pivot that um, that is that is real. And the pivot is is here. This is where the the ball will actually stop. The ball pivots about the point that is uh, touching the touching the incline plane. So if we analyze the torque of the normal force, that is zero because the radius of that torque is zero, the moment arm is zero, and then if we analyze the torque of the force of friction, that is also zero because the force of friction originates at the point of contact and at the pivot, and so that is why um, that, that torque also goes to zero. However, if we consider, if we consider the, the mass, the, the force of gravity, mg acting on from the center of mass and the pivot is here again where it contacts this radius r that that torque is non-zero so the torque due to gravity is equal to r cross f and in this case r is the big r is the radius of the of this the the object rolling f is the mass times gravity and then we have the sine of um, of some angle, the angle of that's that's between the the moment arm and our force of gravity. So if we redraw that, there's your R, there's your mg. This angle here is the same angle as the angle of the incline. So this angle is theta. So this guy is 180 minus theta, and that is the angle between R and Mg, so you have 180 minus theta. Of course, 180 minus theta, the sine of 180 minus theta, rather, is simply the sine of theta. Okay? And so that is, that is the torque due to gravity. Um, again, unlike what the AP um, uh, readers say is that the, it's the torque due to friction, but again, that cannot be. That has to be zero. 
So then if we apply Newton's second law here to, to rotation, sum of the torques is equal to I alpha. Of course, there's only one torque acting, and that's R, M, G, sine theta that we just showed. I is, because it's not rotating about the center of mass, we have to incorporate the parallel axis theorem, which is I, C, M, plus M, D squared, times alpha. Okay? And I, C, M, the AP, the, the question tells us it's two-fifths M, R squared, and the D here is the distance from the pivot to the center of mass, which is just R. Um, alpha is A over R. That's common substitution. Okay. And so you end up with this equation there. If you look carefully, all your R's will cross out. Your M's will cross out. And you'll get that A, this, this over here, right, is going to be 2 fifths plus 1, which is 7 fifths. Then you'll get that A is equal to 5 sevenths G sine theta. Okay? When you plug it back into the force of friction equation, which is what you found early on due to Newton's second law of linear acceleration. You end up with that the force of friction is equal to mg sine theta minus ma. We just found that a oops, minus m times 5 sevenths g sine theta. And we can pull out an mg sine theta. And then what we'll end up with is, um, this is going to be 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths, which is 2 sevenths. And that is the same answer that they got using the wrong way of calculating the torque with the force of friction. So I just have issue with the fact that they didn't use the actual pivot um, and they used the center of mass as the pivot, which is incorrect. So you end up with the same answer, but this is the proper way of going about doing it.